Alrighty, I'm so excited to be discussing my official predictions for the 2022 season at Canada's Wonderland, and I already knew it was going to be a really exciting season based off of what I had seen going into the park um, in terms of construction markers, and uh, I'm even more excited now after the Q2, uh, what do you call it, <laughs> Q2 conference call for their stockholders on their analysis, their revenue, and all that. And boy, was the conference call really about Canada's Wonderland. In fact, I would say a lot of the call was in reference to Canada's Wonderland, and it's honestly really exciting what I have to share. So with the information that I've seen walking around Canada's Wonderland and seeing where these markers are, kind of knowing what's coming based off of conversations we had at Yukon Strikers Media Day, and now with the conference call, revalidating everything that we were told and everything that we're seeing in terms of construction markers, I can very confidently sit here and tell you what I honestly think is coming to Canada's Wonderland. With that being said, please go follow us on Instagram, Amusement Insiders, plural. Um, that is where we're going to be doing a lot of our teasing. We're going to be showing you stuff. We're going to be talking about things on our story. So if you want to partake in a lot of our conversations, go follow us now on Amusement Insiders on Instagram. I promise you, you will not regret it. Pay attention to our stories. That's where I put a lot of my attention. Um, but nonetheless, what do I think is coming to Canada's Wonderland in 2022? Well, you guys already know from previous videos that I think a Harmony Hall, a very large restaurant, is going to be coming to Fireworks Hill next to Vortex um, in 2022. I think I can very confidently with 100% of my knowledge and understanding of construction markers say that we're going to get a very large, unique restaurant Um on Vortex Hill, and I also think it's going to be multi-level. This, From what I could tell from the spray paint and all that, this thing's going to be really large. And I do know, based off of the conference call, that Cedar Fair had directly, <laughs> indirectly, but very directly said that Canada's Wonderland essentially would be getting the restaurant upgrades as all the parks that had received very large restaurant upgrades, like Cedar Point when they launched like three or four restaurants in the same year, they received a very big boost to, um, to their customer satisfaction scores. And that is one area that Canada's Wonderland really needs to focus on. Um, so I definitely think that Canada's Wonderland could also maybe see more than just that one massive restaurant. I think we could see upgrades to some of the existing restaurants, maybe Backlot Cafe. This could be a really exciting year for Canada's Wonderland in terms of food and beverage. And on the conference call, they definitely made it seem that way. Also, what they touched on was extending the calendar year. And indirectly, they also insinuated that Canada's Wonderland could be one of those parks that they do extend the calendar year at. So that is one thing I'm going to predict. I think that we could see an extension of Winterfest. Could Winterfest transition into a winter festival going into January, February? I'm not 100% sure yet. I can't sit here and put full confidence in that, but I do think you're going to see an extension in calendar operating days at Canada's Wonderland, whether that means more Halloween haunt days, more Winterfest days, or an extension of Winterfest into another festival. Again, and on the conference call, they used Knott's Berry Farms festivals, again, not rides, festivals, drawing in crowds and season pass holders into the park on days that they normally wouldn't be operating or days that are normally slower, and it brought a huge increase to customer satisfaction scores and revenue. So I definitely see Canada's Wonderland being the cash cow it is and how successful Winterfest was. Again, this is a park that had the most successful Winterfest in the chain, and that is up against parks that literally have warm climate. So that speaks volumes. If I was Cedar Fair, I'd be like, okay, what else can we do to get these season pass holders and even daily ticket purchasers that don't normally come to the park for the roller coasters into the park? Hello, Canadians are looking for a way to spend time, do things in January, February. It is our most boring time of the year. It's like hibernation. You stay indoors and you do nothing. So I definitely see Cedar Fair maybe experimenting in 2022, maybe 2023 with some sort of winter festival in our dead months to extend. Again, another reason that makes me believe that is Cedar Fair said that they're going to experiment with hiring full-time workers that work all year round. They noticed that they have happier employees, they uh, have higher employee retention when the parks are operating 
more year round. Um, not necessarily the park operating year round, but they had positions that people didn't have to quit for two to three months and then come back to. So I definitely think Canada's Wonderland is going to be one of those parks where they're going to try and experiment with extending the operating season with ever how, however that looks. Again, I'm not fully confident in how that's going to translate into the actual calendar year, what it's going to look like, but I, I can confidently say you're going to see more operating days. However that translates, whatever that ends up being, whether it's adding Wednesday, Thursday to Halloween Haunt or Winterfest, I think you'll see something like that at minimum, but I think that Cedar Fair should aggressively try a January, February winter festival with food, um, specialty beverages, and just like theming. It would be really cool. Light show, like again, uh, they're testing something out on the mountains, so that could be part of it already. Woo, take a breath. I'm super excited. Lots of juicy information in the stockholders call that translates to Canada's Wonderland. Um, again, these are all my opinions. Um, I, I can confidently say, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I do think a lot of the things I'm talking about in this video today are going to end up happening. So again, I, they're not for sure. They're not confirmed until the park makes an announcement. And I'm this isn't insider information. I'm not sharing anything that I shouldn't know. Um, these are honestly my predictions and things that I've looked at at the park. So I'm not receiving any insider information and I'm not leaking anything. I can just confidently say that this is what I do expect that will be coming to Canada's Wonderland. And I can confidently put my my money where my mouth is in terms of especially the Harmony Hall coming to Vortex Hill. But nonetheless... What else? Because this is a really exciting year. For those of you that haven't followed my story on Instagram, Cedar Fair has announced that they're going to spend $175 million to $200 million on 2022 editions and that they would be centered around experiences and food and beverage. And then obviously infrastructure upgrades. So I think Canada's Wonderland is one of those parks that could receive a very big portion of that. Again, you have to go off of the fact that Canada's Wonderland had the most successful launch of Winterfest. And for a big park like Canada's Wonderland that had extreme cold weather where it was like snowstorms and people were still showing up, speaks volumes. I would be investing in Canada's Wonderland. I'd be looking at maybe, uh, again, I do not want this. This is not me saying I want this. But I do think with the Firework Hill leaving that we could see some sort of renovation that Kings Island had in their international street at the front gate coming to Canada's Wonderland for fireworks shows, a festival like Grand Carnival. So that leads me to my other prediction. I do think that Canada's Wonderland is going to see a lot more festivals. You maybe see a winter festival. You'll see a spring festival and a fall festival that draws in people. And I think that they might either build off of what they already have in the summer with those multicultural food festivals that are French... Uh, <laughs> What do you call it? Chef's Kiss. Absolutely amazing. Love the the summer food festivals. Can't wait for them to come back. Um, but I think that we could see something like Grand Carnival. Obviously, Grand Carnival doesn't make sense for a Canadian theme park. But maybe we could see something that pays homage to our Canadian heritage, maybe. Um, I have no idea where they could go with that. Comment down below your ideas. But I definitely think you're going to see some sort of very similar Grand Carnival coming. We already have the parade float tent in the parking lot, so we know that a parade is coming, whether that be for Winterfest. Usually Winterfest Season 2 in the Cedar Fair chain does bring a parade, so I do expect a Winterfest parade, but they could also have a summer parade. Again, on the stockholders' call, they said that these festivals have boosted their customer satisfaction scores exponentially, and Canada's Wonderland's a park that does need their customer satisfaction scores boosted, so I do expect... The things that they've tried at Knott's Berry Farm, Kings Island, and Cedar Point to make their way over to Canada's Wonderland. So let's summarize. Again, I haven't gone into everything because I do think Canada's Wonderland is going to get either a flat ride or a dark ride in 2022. That I'm not fully confident in. I can't fully confidently say that we're going to get a flat ride or a dark ride. But I do know that Canada's Wonderland does like to invest in a flat ride-ish, whether that be a really cheap kitty flat ride or a high thrill flat ride, um, usually every season. Um, but there are seasons, obviously, that don't necessarily translate into that. But for the most part, Canada's Wonderland is that one park that usually always gets a ride or a water park addition. So I do think the three rides that you could see coming to Canada's Wonderland in 2022, obviously, again, anyone could make this prediction, this isn't something unique to me, is either a water slide or mini water park expansion, um, a flat ride in Frontier Canada, or a kitty flat ride somewhere. I do think that it's not gonna be a kitty flat ride in 2022, because we just had that. So I think you're either gonna see a water park expansion or water park addition, 
or The Dark Ride that's rumored to be coming to Action Theater. I do think The Dark Ride is most likely. And if it's not a Dark Ride, it's definitely going to be a flat ride somewhere in Frontier Canada. For those of you, again, that follow us on Amusement Insiders on Instagram, you know that I spotted Canadian theming being delivered to the park yesterday in large quantities. So I do think that they're either prepping for an announcement. Cedar Fair likes to build these little sets for their announcements. Um, or it's theming for a new ride in Frontier Canada. Regardless, I do know that the new um, restaurant that's coming to Canada's Wonderland in 2022, based off of what I know, based off of its location next to the mountain, it's probably going to be Canadian themed. So it could be for that also, but a little early on the arrival. Nonetheless, super excited. 2022 is going to be a big year. Cedar Fair is putting their money where their mouth is, and it's going to translate into an epic announcement coming from the park. Um, again, it's not going to be a roller coaster, so don't get your hopes up. If it was a roller coaster, again, I'm not putting my backing behind this at all. I wouldn't be shocked, and I would be shocked if that makes sense, if it was a 4D um, coaster similar to King's Dominion. But I do think it's going to be a dark ride in action theater. Again, with the success of Winterfest, they are looking for indoor attractions. And again, 2022 announcement is going to be all around Winterfest, restaurants, food and beverage, and experiences. Again, one other thing that this could end up being, which I would love and be really shocked by, but again, it would be a little scary because it takes up a large plot of land. And I don't like the idea of Kendra's Wonderland wasting land on this, but... I think you could see a walkthrough attraction similar to Cedar Point and Knott's Berry Farm. I think that it could go in Whitewater Canyon area with maybe even a dark ride in Action Theater. Again, a lot of these markings, these survey marker points, are in Frontier Canada's location all around this area. So I wouldn't be surprised if we did see a walkthrough attraction where you interact with actors, um, with a storyline about the multi-universe uh, that Cedar Fair is creating. So I, w I wouldn't be shocked if that was part of it. Um, and I'd be really excited. I, I would look forward to that. But I, it, there's some negatives to that. And obviously, there's some positives. But I just want to go over that. So again, um, this could be a really big year for Canada's Wonderland. Or it could be a medium year. It's not going to be a small year. I can promise you that. It's not going to be your small year. This is going to be um, a pretty exciting announcement at minimum. A really exciting announcement. This could be a really epic announcement. This could go down some pretty big avenues with the amount of money that Cedar Fair is throwing in. Again, you have to take into the fact that King's Dominion is getting a 4D coaster and a new themed area. Doesn't take up a lot of that 175 to 200 million. So that leaves Cedar Point, which I do think is getting a coaster in 2022. And the, again, on the stockholders call, uh, on, on a financial statement, uh, on the events and presentations on Cedar Fair's website, you can actually see they say on that, e, uh, what do you call it, slideshow that they always have. They come up with one every like couple months. They say they're going to start the construction projects in Q4 um, as soon as the parks go into weekend operations. So they do touch on the fact that there has been no construction at parks. Again, some parks are a little different. Um, it saves a lot of money when you just start the construction projects a little later when the revenue stream starts to come in. So they did touch on that, why you haven't seen construction at some parks. So don't give up hope on Cedar Point. And uh, just because you don't see construction at these other parks, obviously $175 million to $200 million is a lot of money. And that's going to translate into some pretty epic, um, awesome additions. Again... Based off the call, it doesn't necessarily mean coasters. It looks like food and beverage and experiences and infrastructure is a big fo focus. And infrastructure for a park like Canada's Wonderland could mean anything at the front gate area. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Definitely want to hear from you guys down below. Ooh, this is a really long video. I apologize. But it's a lot of information. Um, and I do think I'm pretty spot on. So again, I really want to be right because, you know, we were pretty close with Yukon Striker. We only got the height a little off, but we were the only ones predicting an outback layout. And we were the only ones predicting records to be broken. And a lot of people were questioning on us, us on that. But we ended up being right. A little wrong with the Giga. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a storyline behind that. If you've met me in the park, you, you, you've heard the story on why we thought it was going to be a giga. It was an honest mistake. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, uh, I do think we're going to be pretty spot on. And I think we're going to earn a lot of your guys' trust in terms of being able to figure things out. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm really excited if you can't tell. I've lost my track of mind just because we're about two to three weeks away from announcement for Canada's Wonderland, by the way. So in about two to three weeks, um, you should see an announcement from Canada's Wonderland on what's coming uh, to the park. 
And uh, they should be – okay, sorry, I didn't touch on this. Canada's Wondering will be open in September, fall, on, on weekends. I can confirm that. Um, wait for the park to obviously make an announcement. But, uh, again, based off of the conference call, uh, the park will be open on weekends. Don't worry. They're looking to expand their calendar days at a park like Canada's Wonderland. Canada's Wonderland is killing it. Um, in terms of sales and revenue. So Cedar Fair's focus is on this park. As, on the conference call, they even stated this is one of their largest, most profitable parks in the chain. So it is the most attended seasonal park as well. Um, again, we are the only park with restrictions on attendance in the chain right now. Um, and that speaks volumes that we're doing so well. So Again, I expect record, um, not record, sorry, I expect a huge increase in revenue, especially with Canada's Wonderland being open in Q3 and then leading into Q4 when Canada's Wonderland has no restrictions on attendance starting around fall, Cedar Fair said is their prediction. Um, I do expect Canada's Wonderland to be holding up the chain again like it normally does. Um, nonetheless, super exciting. Can't wait for the announcement. I think we're all going to be a little shocked. I think we're all going to be a little blown away. And I think we're all going to be a, uh, a, a really happy. I think a lot of us really want some new food and beverage options, and they're going to deliver. I know they're going to deliver based off of the conference call. I know they're going to deliver based off of the construction markings. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, comment down below, and I will try and respond to everyone. Um, and yeah, if you see us in the park, feel free to say hi. A lot of people always message us after being like, I was too shy. Don't worry. I'm a nerdy, shy guy myself. I ain't going to bite. I ain't going to do anything. It is not rude to ask for a picture, even to just talk to us for a couple of minutes at all. I am super nerdy. You have nothing to worry or fear about me. I am literally uh, a Hagrid, okay? <laughs> I'm Hagrid from Harry Potter. I honestly love it when people um, come up and say what they have to say about my content. It means a lot to me. It honestly boosts my confidence a lot. Um, I have really weak confidence. Uh, you can tell I shatter sometimes. I crumble um, when things go wrong. So it means a lot. Honestly, the people that have been coming up, thank you so much. You've boosted me a lot and you've helped a lot more than you'll ever know. So thanks so much. Thanks for watching the content and have a good, is it the weekend yet? No, have a good almost weekend. It's Thursday. Whew, I'm so excited. Can't wait for 2022. Epic. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. <laughs>